Hi guys, today I thought I'd do something kind of different. My thought was I would show you how we can make butter here on the farm. Um, it's not something everybody could probably do, though you can go buy cream at the grocery store and make butter from regular cream. But we use our farm fresh milk that we get from our cow. And because it's not homogenized, because it's natural, the cream actually rises to the top of the jar. So we have from here down is pretty much skim milk. I can't tell if you guys are going to be able to see that line. I kind of think you can over here. But from here down is skim milk. And from up, this up is cream. And so what we do is we milk the cow and put the milk in the jars. And then we will actually leave it for however long. Within 12 hours, it's pretty much separated out. Um, if you leave it a little longer, the cream rises a little more and you get a little more defined cream, a little like drier cream sort of, if you want to say. Um, and so what we do from this point on is now I'll take a quart jar. And I have to tell you, I'm on my knees on the floor in the kitchen. So this may not go as well as I had hoped, but I didn't want to have you just seeing everything down there and not be able to see my face. So I take the jar and you can see the sticky cream on the top there. Can you see the, yeah, that's the good stuff. That's what we want. And then, this is awkward, I gotta stand. So then I take the, where's the best spot? The jar and I try to just generally pour off the top of the cream here. Yeah, about like that. Now, sorry, right-handed. I use a, a small ladle. And I go ahead and scoop the rest of the cream that's just kind of sitting on the surface of the skim milk off and add it to my jar. It's very thick and creamy. So it does kind of make a little bit of a mess as it kind of splops around. But at some point, I start seeing the skim milk swirl through the, the cream. As I, when I scoop the milk off, underneath I'll see a swirl of kind of a bluish fluid. And that's pretty much the skim milk, which I don't want too much of that. So, I like that. All right. Now this, I actually will just feed to the pigs. Although, you can... You can take the skim milk and heat it up to about 170 degrees and put a little bit of uh, just white vinegar into it. And if you stir it and keep heating it, it will actually separate into a very fine curds and whey, which is perfect for ricotta. It's a homemade type ricotta. And I will do that sometimes if I know I'm gonna wanna make like ricotta pancakes or lasagna, something like that, that a nice kind of a smooth, creamy cheese works really well. And so I will do that with skim milk sometimes, but for me, it's just easier to feed it to the pigs because I have so much more milk out in the fridge outside. So now I've got my quart of cream, or quart jar of cream. It's technically just over, what is that, a pint? I don't know. And the way that, there's different, different ways to do this. Hang on just a sec, my coffee pot, my little mocha pot just finished my coffee. Yum. Perfect. Okay. So one way of, of getting the cream to turn into butter is just literally to just shake it. You can sit and agitate this, and it takes... 20 minutes, it takes forever, it feels like, but that's because you start getting tired and you realize you're just kind of going like this. We watch TV and we do this, you know. So shaking it gets tiring and we kind of send it to each person in the family and we'll watch a TV show and then I'll usually put it back in the fridge because it's too warm. We'll get it out the next day during a TV show and we'll take turns again and that usually seems to do it. Um, I've tried using my blender, which works okay, but you can't even do this much cream at a time. And I have a food processor and it works okay, but it makes a giant mess because you can only do about a half of this much at a time. Um, I've used my mixer and that makes a gigantic mess because you put the whisk in there and then when it starts to get thick and kind of, it starts throwing it all over the kitchen. So I don't do that anymore either. Um, probably just a regular old butter churn like they used to have back in the old days, a daisy churn or something like that would be the best plan, but I don't have one of those. So I have hands and I have family members who have hands. So we basically just take turns shaking a jar like this. So as any good kitchen um, food show has, I have a, woo, we're gonna fast forward through time. And this is the butter that we shook up yesterday. And it's sitting in its, it's uh, buttermilk. It's not, it's not a true buttermilk. The buttermilk you buy at the, well, it actually is a true buttermilk. The buttermilk you buy at the store is actually a cultured product, very much like yogurt. So true buttermilk is the, the fluid that's left after the butter fat clumps together and tightens up and squeezes all this fluid out. Um, so that's what we get. You can see, I hope, yeah, it's super, super yellow. 
because our cow eats grass. So it has all the, it has all the, I think, beta carotene in there that um, a lot of the dairy cows that are fed just feed in the feedlots don't get. Um, so my, I don't have to add any color to my butter to make it yellow. So the next thing I do is we have to wash the butter. And I know that sounds weird. You think, how can you wash the butter? But because it's so waxy, it's actually pretty easy. So what I'll do is get a bowl. What bowl? I'll get one you can see through. And I take... Hmm... I'll take a um, spatula, and this butter sat in the fridge overnight, so it's actually, it's pretty stuck together and hard. Actually, I don't even know if I can get it out of the jar. So let me pour it in here. So there, there's the butter. <laughs> it's still stuck in there. Can you see it? This actually works to my advantage. Because the buttermilk that's left behind is a byproduct I'm not interested in. So I will put this in this jar to give to the pigs. Make a giant mess. So, note to family, don't drink this jar of milk. It's gonna taste funny. <laughs> Stick it over there. All right, so now I'm gonna get my butter out of the jar, hopefully. It's, because it's been refrigerated, it's real hard and waxy right now, as you would expect butter from the fridge to be. Come out of there. Okay. There we go. All right. So here's my butter, basically granules. So the, the trick with butter, when you're washing butter, is if you use warm water to wash it, you'll soften it, which is what I'll do to start with to get this to kind of to clump back together, because right now it's just literally like little seeds of butter, little butter balls. Um, and I want it to be a little more of a... Um, play-doughy substance kind of, but if you use too warm a water, you'll start melting it, you know, like melted butter. And um, it will all end up at the top in oil. You don't want that either. And if you use really cold water, you'll keep the butter nice and hard and solid, which when you're trying to wash it, isn't great. You want it to be chilled water, but to start with, I'm gonna make it a little bit warm just so I can get this butter back together. Okay, so here we have our butter in the sink. We need to soften it up a little bit and we're trying to wash all this white buttermilk out. We, that will actually make the butter ran, go rancid sooner. So our goal is to have nice clear water after we're done rinsing this that it's just plain water and not any uh, buttermilk left in there. So I'm going to start with water that's not super cold. I'm gonna see if I can get this butter to clump up a little bit here. See how it's becoming more waxy and a little less lumpy? That's what I want. I want it to be nice and waxy. Kind of smooth. Now, I've got this buttermilk here, buttermilk water mixture, and I want to dump that out. So, like that. So now, see, my butter is more pliable. I can work with it a little more. I can squeeze it around. My goal here is to try to squeeze out all that white fluid, all the buttermilk. So I'll spread it around again, and I'll put some more. Now, the water's getting colder now. And this is actually called washing your butter or rinsing your butter. And it is an important step if you want it to last very long on the counter or in the fridge. Okay. Now we rinse it again, dump that out. Now I'm gonna have the water get a little bit colder now. You can see the water is clearing up each time. I get a little bit less white stuff in the in the water, and when it finally is just clear, then I know I'm done rinsing my butter. 
And I'm going to say this is pretty much it. We're going to eat this so fast that a little tiny bit of buttermilk left in it isn't going to make any difference because it'll be gone by tomorrow probably. The buttermilk doesn't hurt you in any way. It just, um, it's like leaving milk out on the counter. It starts to give it kind of a yogurty maybe flavor that's not like one of those like sweet yogurts, but kind of like a really bitter tart yogurt that you might not want your butter to taste like. So you can see the water still a little bit, little bit murky, but that's going to work just fine for me. At this point, you actually have a, a, just a sweet cream butter, an unsalted sweet cream butter. My family, because this will probably, I'm not going to bake with it because it's too much work to make, but it goes so, <clears throat> so nicely on um, toast, bagels, um, sweet potato, or, uh, potatoes, you know, like mashed potatoes or, you know, baked potatoes, anything where you just really want to taste that butter or ooh, on the top of like hot cereal. That's another good one. And so what I do is I use kosher salt, which is the heavy flake salt. This is, to me, it's important. I generally, I only cook with, um, like sea salt, you know, Mediterranean sea salt or one of those sea salts, but with the butter, it's kind of important that you use the kosher salt because the kosher salt will actually break down and won't be greedy in the butter. Whereas some of those other salts, they don't want to break down because, um, salt dissolves in water. Well, we've just now tried really hard to remove most of the water. So that makes it kind of hard to get the salt to break down where the kosher salt will break down pretty easily because it's kind of like a processed salt that's flaky. Okay, so there's our butter. Now ready for salting. Now, I like my butter very salty when it's you know, homemade butter. It just brings out the flavor a lot. So I'll shake a fair amount of salt in here. And then I just kind of fold it in, smush it around, gather it back up and fold it some more just to get that mixed in there thoroughly and also to help give the salt a chance to kind of break down so it's not crunchy in my butter. I don't want little bits of gravel in my butter, which is one reason I like the kosher salt because it does break down really easily. It just spreads out very smoothly. Yeah, that's pretty much how you got it. So it freezes really well. Less we have butter that we're still using that I made probably, probably, gosh, when did I have that ice cow? seven years ago and it's you know and it's great for baking it's not so great for maybe putting on toast it's a little strong but um it's still completely usable and you know one that was half a gallon of, of milk and we got that much butter not too bad huh now the way i would store this butter would be either to put it in a little tupperware container right and i could just leave it on the counter because just like regular butter when you put it in the fridge it's gonna stiffen up really hard and be hard to cut with a butter knife if you leave it on the counter it's easy but it doesn't last near as long so if i'm saving it say to use maybe in three weeks or whatever if i'm you know going through a crazy butter spell and i'm making butter every day and i'm making you know loaves and loaves of this stuff then i'm gonna want to freeze it so the way i do that um, I will show you. This is a piece of wax paper here. So I take my little butter ball. And it's always a good idea to taste it. Mm. And make sure it tastes good. That Not that it's going to taste bad, but that it's salty enough for you. Or too salty. You, you know, and that's, oh, I forgot to mention. If you go, oh my gosh, that's too salty. Ugh, you can actually rinse the salt back out, right? You can wash butter. You can wash salt out of it as well. Leave it in the thing, add some water, stir it around, dump it, and taste it again. Okay, so you can't mess up the salting process, but you got to check it before you're going to finally be done. Because once this stiffens up in the fridge, it's going to be really hard to melt back out and smear it around in water to rinse the, the salt back out. So test, test it before you go ahead and decide to store it. So, um... All right, so there's my butter ball. Just smear it around a little bit like that, okay? Now, the trick is to roll your um, wax paper like this and use if you have a nice flat edge like this. I've actually used I've actually used my credit card before to do this, but I found this is much longer and works better. So I set it here, a flat edge, and I basically just pull this bottom part of the sheet out from under it a little bit. What that does is it puts the butter into this nice little tube. Can you see that? Right? And now all I have to do is just roll it like that and kind of twist the edges. 
and I can throw this into a Ziploc and toss it in the freezer and I'm good to go. So sometimes I'll write the name or the, not the name, I'll write the date on the Ziploc saying like which batch of butter it was because you know, I get this, this urge to make butter mm, used to be pretty often when my kids were little, but now maybe two or three times a year is all. And so I want to make sure that I eat it in the order that I made it so that I'm not eating the freshest butter and then going in and finding butter that's been sitting in there for four years, right? So what I'll do is I'll put this in a Ziploc and on the Ziploc, I'll write, you know, um, April, 2020 there. And uh, so that's how we make butter here on the farm. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you guys are having a, you know, decent time locked up in your own houses. I know that I'm having an okay time. It's working out, I guess, right? And maybe, uh, Next time I'll think of something else that we can do that's not service dog related, not dog training related, that's just passes the time. Anyway, have a good one and talk to you guys later. Bye.